say at this point and before we start the debate that we invited the electoral commission and uh, spoke to them variously during the day yesterday and today um, but despite the promises of them appearing and being part of this very important discussion on the implications of what they have directed what they have announced they have made no show they have turned down the invitation, our invitation to have them on this show, both the chairman and, uh, and the spokesperson will not therefore be part of this discussion. But Mr. Biavakama, if you're listening and watching us from the comfort of your room, uh, know that uh, this debate is important and we wish that you had participated actively. That said, we are going to be having um, a formidable team and uh, like I said, the implications of the announcement banning campaign rallies in a number of uh, districts, we shall be discussing them. And uh, to discuss that, we have um, Mr. Um, or oh, let me start with the only lady right now here. We have the Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba. She is the Secretary General of the ruling party, the National Resistance Movement. Honorable, you are most welcome uh, to Behind the Headlines. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good. Um, seated on her right is um, Mr. Waiswa um, Mufumbiro. Waiswa Mufumbiro is the head of training and uh, ideology of the National Unity Platform. You're most welcome to this show for, I think it is your maiden appearance, right? Yes, it is my maiden appearance. I am extremely humbled that I have been given this opportunity uh, to come and uh, give our view of issues as Good. matters of national importance. Good. And uh, NOP is in the news for you know, various reasons and uh, we will be discussing some of those dynamics. Um, on my immediate left is uh, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, um, teaches economics at uh, Makere University Business School. He is a panelist on this show. Mr. Ramadan, you're most welcome back to the show. Thank you, Charles. Good evening to you. You know, uh, now I call you Kao Nao. Survivor, <laughs> you're most hey, welcome. Me is in the club, eh? Back to the panel, and uh, the yeah, yeah. I'm delighted to have you. And I always, that's why I decided to come today. Good, not to do Zoom. It's good to have you to see you again. Yeah. Uh, it has been Zoom that I've been following. But since he has said Kawana means a survivor, <laughs> um, we, you know, COVID is the discussion this year uh, for this bad year, and uh, for the last three weeks I've, I was down. And uh, yesterday I did the final test, and I'm glad to say I tested negative twice the last week, and then when I finished my treatment, and then yesterday. So that should be, um, what can I say, a lesson or an experience that uh, if you detect COVID early, you can actually beat it off. And... Uh, in various ways but we will be discussing that later online through zoom we have honorable Nobat Mao um, all the way from Barara city um, is Nobat Mao on already okay my technical team says they are trying to link up the network is not good MTN um, ensure that the line is good so that we can have Chairman Norbert Mao, who is a presidential candidate, and uh, he is right now uh, going to be on this show from Barara City, where he is campaigning. Um, and we have the Honorable Margaret Muhanga, all the way from Fort Porto City. Margaret, I'm told you are online. Good, I can see you. Yes, I'm online. How is Fort Porto? And good evening, viewer. Yes, I am in Fort Porto. How is it doing? We are fine, doing very well. But, but we are fighting COVID because it's 
getting into almost every every ward or every parish. Okay. Um, let, let me let me start with uh, let me start with Waiswa. Um, Waiswa, your party has been uh, in the news event today. You failed to campaign in Kalangala, and uh, Kalangala settling is not one of those. Um, districts that were named among the 15 where campaigns are banned. Kampala is. Um, but uh, what, do you, what, what do you make of, uh, of this ban? It is and how, how is it affecting you? It is absurd for Uganda. And uh, it is absurd uh, for Mr. Biarukama. Because the depth of democracy cannot be in the hands of a few people to make decisions upon. Uh, but then, for us, we believe that COVID has been used as an excuse uh, to torment Ugandans against all the core values of the Constitution that brought this regime to power. Um, so definitely it did not come as a surprise that we were banned uh, from coming to places where we have, we have not yet come. Because after all, you know that at, uh, in Busoga uh, it has been a tug of war. We were arrested in Luuka. He survived being, he survived death from Kayunga, he was shot at, um, I mean the presidential candidate, our vision bearer, he was shot at uh, around the bridge Ambercourt, he was shot at in uh, western Uganda, uh, his uh, closest uh, friend and, uh, and, and activist, Nubian Lee, you know, was hit with a tear gas canister, close to the principal. So, for us, we are looking at this as a trajectory of the, uh, something that has been planned by a certain group of people with power uh, against us uh, participating in a free and fair constitutional democratic process. Because uh, the talk is very clear from the military, from... Uh, other sources of power on how sinful it is for our generation to stand up for what we think is right. So the Electoral Commission uh, have, you, have, you, have you complained to them officially over this particular ban, specifically on the ban? You see the actions of the Electoral Commission, you have a chairman who has a whole docket of public relations that has a budget that is passed by parliament okay and he comes on national television around the international media organizing when he is in charge of organizing on a very critical election that ugandans want to have an opportunity of uh, free and peaceful transition of power he comes and tells you that, you know what, I did not know what was happening because uh, my DSTV is not working. But this is a person who is paid by, and, and, and TV, TV stations like UBC, in fact, he did not know that they are free. You can get them on these other television sets free of charge. But that is the type of chairperson. So for us, we see this as uh, something that has been done specifically against us. Because during consultations... You think they're targeting NOOP specifically? Because it is us who have not been to these places. Mm. It is NOOP that has not been there. In, in fact, I had the president. At first I thought that uh, president... Even, was, even, even FDC, I think, has not I thought, been to many, to, to but almost at least, 10 of this. But at least they have been, like in Kampala. You know, you cannot say you are organizing a national election and then candidates are not, uh, are not, are, are not campaigning in the capital city. Okay. You cannot say that candidates cannot campaign in Wachiso district, which has a population of 3 million. But this is all to the advantage of the incumbent. 
Wakiso, Wakiso, Wakiso has a population of about a, 3 million. A voting, a voting population of, I think, 1.2. You see, 1.1 or 1.2. You see, when you are talking about democracy, you do not only talk about those people that are going to participate in the election. Okay. Because you, democracy, you talk about the mindset of the entire Ugandans that you govern. Because you are talking about the will of the majority. Okay. And there is no way you can have a fraction of the many not being represented by those who don't vote. Professor here can help us with the statistics. So in a nutshell, uh, this ban is uh, all in the favor of the incumbent president because one for him, he has benefited from being the, uh, the commander in chief. Uh, 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 he's, he's put, he's, he has been branded everywhere at the expense of us not being accepted. Uh, just like there, I want to so bring in. I want to bring in the Secretary General, who um, presumably is the primary beneficiary of what you are actually, um, you know, um, alleging. Um, Honorable Justice, you stand accused of uh, targeting um, or benefiting directly from the actions of Electoral Commission. Is that a fair? Is that a fair accusation against you by your colleague from NOP? You're asking for the obvious answer. It is a no. <laughs> for reasons being that af the, when we are, when we are, when the Electoral Commission put out the timetable, the program for elections, and uh, they told us when people should go and what they should go with. For us as the NRM, when the Electoral Commission told us to go, for when we had the qualified, when our candidate qualified for nominations, part of what we were told in a meeting of all of the candidates, or those who are intending to, the, the, were intending to contest, we are told you come with the program, your campaign program, and the, after nominations, two days down the, 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 the road, we are invited, either candidates or the agents, to go and harmonize the program under the chair of the Electoral Commission. So NRM handed in, we handed in our presidential candidates program, proposed program, on the nomination day, and it was only NRM that handed in. No other party or candidate, not even independents, did. So we waited for them to bring, and they never brought. Then the Electoral Commission said, you NRM go ahead, whoever will be bringing, they will be aligning their program Correct. to yours. Yes. When some, the second one brings, they will do the same. We went down to do campaigns. We looked at the dates, uh, the, day, the days that were allocated for campaigns, and we made the program the way we made our program. Now, we made our program in such a way that we have zonal or sub-zonal meetings of leaders who invite, and then the leaders go to take the message to the people they lead. Our candidate, His Excellency, Yuri Kabutam Seven. There is no single day that he went against or flouted the SOPs. They were, they were given to us during nomination. They, 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 he didn't. And the, our candidate, when he was filling the nomination form, for which I endorsed as a Secretary General, he accepted to abide by the rules of the game, and he has followed. So. When Electoral Commission brought out this, the restrictions, we as NRM, yes, we are not happy with it, but we, since we, we say he, he put a signature and said he will follow the rules of the game, we have to follow. What are you not but happy? all our candidates at even the different levels, we as a party, once the Secretary General said you abide by the rules, we have two. And we've done that. And uh, it's not that we even did only this, I meaning we're even talk, we're walking the talk before. Now, what were we not, what were we not, before I come to what, what to, to answer his, before I come to the question you're asking, the issue you are, he's saying that it favors the incumbent. One, we, the, our candidate had moved in all the zones. What we were remaining with was the, the, the Wakiso as a district, 
who had put it as a zone on our program, Mukono and Kampala. That's where we had put it. And by the way, you may not be the ones who have been leading, like in the elections of 2016, in the presidential elections, but that's where we, we get the highest number of votes. That's where we got the highest number of votes for a presidential candidate. So, when we are now getting to where the biggest number is of voters were slumped by this, by the Electoral Commission. Yet, all of the three, Mukko, the Greater Mukono, Wakiso, and Kampala, all closed. Yet, our opponents, for the other districts where they've not closed, they still had days to go and campaign. According to their program, we don't have that. So for us to say we are going back to any of the other districts or any of the other places, we must now go and seek permission from the Electoral Commission. And then the Electoral Commission will have to look at all the, all the programs of all of the, the other candidates and then give us permission. And they also, they, have, they also reserve the right to say, don't go. They have that. So when somebody says it favors us, how can it favor us when it has closed on what was remaining for us? And it, it, for you, for the other candidates, they still have the opportunity to go to the other places because the, their programs, is, we are still reading that. The issue of saying it is favoring us, in some way, he may be right, like maybe a quarter percent, a, qu a quarter of, uh, a qu maybe right, let me, let me give you, put it at a, a quarter or 25 percent. <laughs> yes, he's the incumbent, he's known, they know him. I mean, if one may not have seen the face, heard the name. If one has never heard the name, at least saw the face. And if one says President Yoru Kakuta then that means that it rings a bell in your mind that he's supposed to be the president, he's the president. That in itself has an uh, effect on somebody's sake. So he may be right with that. But what I want to, the issue of uh, the announcements by the Electoral Commission, the law empowers them to do that. Unilateral? However, they would have called us for mm -hmm. discussion as their customers and as their consumers. Because, you know, it's not all about having the, the power to do, but we also stakeholders in the, within their power. We're also part of the stakeholders that makes them have a credible process, but also convincing Ugandans that everything is going on well. One, our candidate has been following all of the SOPs. He has never flouted. When the Electoral Commission decided now to come up, based on whatever information they may have say, shared with the, the Minister of Health, they bundled us up, our candidate who has been following all the SOPs, and those who have not been following the SOPs, those they've summoned and those they've never summoned, those who have appeared before them and those who have never appeared before them, given as a punishment to all of us okay. in, the, the, in the spirit of, of uh, safeguarding Ugandans in these particular areas against the spread of, uh, of COVID-19. And uh, we, we, did, you, did you write a protest letter to them, to the chairman? We Have you protested? As a chairman, as the new chairperson of the IPOD Council, I've written under IPOD Council because I thought since I'm now leading my colleagues, we should go. And this don't f affect only NRM. Hmm. It affects all my colleagues under iPod. We decided let's write it as iPod. And uh, we're expecting response from them. Not to say we'll not follow, but there are certain things that we must discuss as a way forward. To ease their work, but also ease our work. One of them is, you are saying... You have suspended electoral activities or campaign activities or whatever political activities but we are moving towards elections mm. we must have every candidate must do certain things in order to to to, to get to that day one of them Kampala alone has 1000 about 1460 polling stations we are entitled to two 
agents per polling station. But they are yet to bring out guidelines. They could still give us more. Now, if we are training our agents, is that a political activity or not? How are you terming that? How are we going to do it if it is one of those that you are suspending that must not be? Yes, we may train 200, 200. Are you going to, st to stop us? Must we not ha prepare for the, for the voting day? And if we are not to prepare for the voting day, then we, what happens? Do elections take place or not? Okay. So these are things that electoral commission must discuss with we, we, we political parties that have candidates, but also independents. There must be a platform for clarity. Mm. Then it's another issue. You have stopped political activities, but then you have um, you have the the, the 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 movements of people have, have not been restricted. Can I carry people from here to the next place? A district that is not named among the, among the 14, what happens? But to that, I had a discussion yesterday with the chairman, electoral commission, and he said it's okay, provided you observe the SOPs, even where you are holding the meeting. But I told, uh, we, we, we told him it's better if you could have a meeting and have this clarified. Another issue, this is government-owned media, UBC where we are. Mm -hmm. You remember the, the court ruling of 2016, the um, Amama Ambaba versus Yori Kabuta uh, 7 and Electoral Commission. Yeah. Part of the complaint in that petition was that uh, candidates were not given equal access to government of the media. Broadcaster. So, now, we have been having meetings of few people, then we come here to the media. Hmm. Now, that you have closed the meetings, you as electoral commission, who has given the responsibility in that ruling that during elections, the, the, the electoral commission must work with the management of the state-owned media to ensure that candidates have equal access to airtime? What is happening? No discussion. Apart from that, even if it's uh, privately owned media houses, these privately owned media houses are regulated by UCC. We, as candidates, are customers and consumers to the Electoral Commission. And even political parties register with the Electoral Commission. We, government funds us through the Electoral Commission, meaning we who are under iPod, we who have representatives in Parliament, our budget is with the Electoral Commission. Now, you are putting us into the hands of the privately owned media. How are you, how are you safeguarding us? How are you insulating <coughs> us from the high prices or being at the mercy of the businessmen and women who own these media houses? How are you doing it as electoral commission? So that you, 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 make, as mu you make it as much as possible to, to be fair to all of us. How, how are they doing it as electoral commission? I would think we need these issues answered so that we, because we are their customers. You can't run away from your customers. Yes, you yes, cannot yes. run away from your consumers. Right, Honorable, you said, you said you had a meeting. Was this an official one or the one under iPod with the chairman or you were trying to seek for an official meeting to iron out all this? As good... Secretary General of NRM, oh, as Secretary realizing General. that I'm losing out on, on time, yeah. I got a phone call and rang the chairman electoral commission and asked him since you gave us the number of 200 people I'm supposed to meet people in Wakiso or my candidate is supposed to meet people in Wakiso Nakasongola is not part of the 14 districts that you have named can I carry my 200 people of Wakiso and have a, a meeting in a field in Wakiso <laughs> of course after having a discussion with the, the, the COVID teams in Wakiso the security team so that everything is done within the law is it okay? he said it's okay I told him it's better you put it in writing but it would be better if we had a meeting and had a discussion and then you write or giving, clarifying on these very issues so that everybody knows. Meeting us at presidential level, there are those at parish level. How do they get that information? It is Good. after you've written. Good. Um, so, but under I, thought, I had a meeting today, uh, my first meeting today, as the chairperson of the iPod Council, 
we had this discussion and we have written to the electoral commission okay. we are waiting for quick response from them because we are losing out on time okay you are actually exactly i think today you have exactly two weeks and uh, maybe even less than two weeks now because campaign st stops on the 12th right campaign stop on the 12th so you have actually less than two weeks to finalize these things um mr ramadan um one the, the secretary general has laid out a number of fundamental points and uh, that you really see deserved a meeting of minds consultation or consultative process but which apparently have not taken place again i must admit it's really regrettable that the chairman and the spokesperson have refused to come for this show these issues would have been answered here and now but do you think that the, ch the electoral commission without laying really blame but are they failing on their work why can't they consult do you think that these matters can still be addressed even going back and saying mm. chairman you made a mistake unilaterally declaring this these are stakeholders these are important offices that these people are seeking for can you still have a meeting do you think that is possible in the circumstance or is it even necessary Thank you, Charles. Um, you know, the politics here in Africa is similar to, to the football also we have in Africa. There is football played all over the world, but in Africa here, our game of football usually also uh, is a mirror image of our politics. In a way that you will find... Uh, the players and the spectators they are often they have issues with the the way the rules of the game are enforced how the referees are officiating the game and also how the game itself is structured it's not that football is bad it's a bad game but the way the football is structured and played can affect the outcome of that football. That's why you see that, like in politics, most of our football in Africa is full of violence. Uh, I remember I was a very good supporter of Express FC. And we went to Nachivubo Stadium. I thought you still support them. Now, let me tell you the story. <laughs> we went to Nachivubo Stadium. I was still a student at Makere doing my first degree. And they hit us with the stones, those people of KCC. And I <laughs> saw before God that I will never go back to a stadium in Uganda. And I've never stepped in a, a stadium in Uganda to watch football again. Why there were stones? But one, the referee took a decision to cancel a goal like uh, we see goals uh, uh, can be scored and the, uh, even in these uh, European leagues which we, we enjoy watching uh, I'm now a, a very good support of one of the English teams and the, sometimes they score and the referee you know cancels one of those goals because it was illegal or something and you see fans could be dissatisfied but they all go back to their seats and they wait for another goal and so on. Why do I bring the analogy of football? To show you that the institutional arrangement of every competition matters a lot in determining the credibility of that whatever uh, 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 game is being played. Now, when it comes to our politics here, I think we sometimes take a casually certain things which are very, very critical in determining the credibility of the decision as well as the competition which is being carried out. Why did, the, for example, Electoral Commission think that it could casually announce, actually at the first everybody saw a tweet from the spokesman of the Electoral Commission, announcing that the following districts have been suspended. Why? Because of COVID numbers. The reality is COVID 
is beginning to become one of the greatest catastrophes humanity has ever seen globally it has killed over 1.8 million people you know when you say 1.8 million someone thinks oh 1.8 they died he just you know is looking at a number in his head and they don't see the magnitude of what you are talking about but just imagine 1.8 human beings piled in a, a certain place like in Kampala here the entire city will be full of corpses in every you know space you could see and these are human beings who started this year alive and they have died i was watching cnn yesterday evening and i saw that they had lost three thousand people in, in day. one day yeah dying three thousand you know in uganda we used it to money you say three thousand is little money here they are human beings three thousand they died in 18 hours and mr waiswa comes and say covid is being used as an excuse and i don't blame him partly because number one the way we have politicized this pandemic in this country he has reached a point where i think some people are casually thinking that ah, covid is here it is killing some people but we can also go on with our business and one of those serious businesses now is to look for votes someone uh, does not mind whether among those people is looking the votes from about 200 plus have died and uh, another maybe 1000 may die by the time we vote on 14th so i think number one to be uh, very ex uh, explicit on your question electoral commission handled a very serious matter casually they should first of all have sat with all the stakeholders and go through these facts first and foremost the data they have which type of data do we have which is informing this decision why these districts kampala wakis and so on and so forth masaka and so on why are those particular districts we show them the numbers in terms of the for example the cases which are coming up every day and the, the risk which is you know we are putting our people into and the two someone should ask on top of the question is the, the the competitors have asked why not the entire country why don't you stop the entire country if covid is a problem why do you select these particular ones now that data would have helped to show you that much as there are other you know places where campaigns are taking place here it would be uh, because maybe the scientists have told us that the following areas they are becoming hot spots and also something which i think uh, the, the the right honorable Lumumba has talked about will the electoral commission pay for the air time which these candidates are going to use to campaign scientifically because at the beginning they had said so that these campaigns are going to be scientific are they going to pay for that air time such that everybody gets equal time on media to converse for votes and also ensure that the media host everyone you know in an equitable manner these are things which the electoral commission should have you know uh, uh, communicated in an effective way to make uh, my friend wise and others believe that this referee is not actually against the, the the underdogs by giving an advantage to the incumbent because when you look at uh, what has been happening in uganda in the uh, about now six months or so of politicking there is a feeling that nope and uh, these other parties they have a huge disadvantage uh, uh, to run the campaigns under covid 
for, uh, over the incumbent because the incumbent is already known for them they have to get to the fields that you know to the places and get known that's why you have seen that there is a lot of uh, chaos uh, between the security agencies which are trying to enforce the covid sops which the electoral commission said must be followed during campaigns have 200 people and you wonder how they select the 200 people and so on and so forth so i i think really uh, mr waiswa and the, all of these other stakeholders instead of coming out to show that uh, covid is an excuse uh, and, and, and other conspiracy theories against it. They would do a good job by showing, first and foremost, some sympathy with those who have been affected by COVID, that we, we really see the magnitude of this problem, this pandemic. But as a best way forward, this is what we would suggest to be done when uh, you bring an alternative how do you think we can, under the circumstances, hold these elections without endangering the Ugandans, especially the seniors? Because, you know, some people, especially younger people, think since for us we are not dying of COVID, it is for, all, for old people. We can go on with our campaigns. After all, it is for mainly sick people and old ones. But, you know, those but many who are people who are dying. No, 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 even if they don't die. Those who are tend, the rallies go back home and when they go back with covid they infect the seniors their grandparents their parents let me tell you i'm on social media on facebook every morning i open there is one of my followers who's announcing the death of their either grandparent or their parent and they don't realize that they frequency at which they are losing these seniors could be really pointing at the fact that covid is claiming them over and above the younger ones because the younger ones can perhaps fight it off they get infected they are symptomatic then they go the very cup your grandfather says give me a cup of tea you hand it to him he drinks the following week is is gone so COVID is real, it is killing people, and it's going to get worse if we don't control it. So the politicians need to realize that there is a Uganda after 14th January. And that Uganda needs all of us to be healthy and to ensure that, that that is done. There is need to control on the rate at which the infections are spreading. But that can only happen if the referee of this game is seen to be neutral and by consulting the stakeholders that's the best way to go forward okay good um let me bring in um the guests that we have on zoom um i i don't know whether chairman mao is online already but uh, if uh, not yet signaled um let me bring in honorable margaret muhanga um M margaret Kabarole, where you are and where you are campaigning, is one of the districts the, where campaigns have been banned. Um, tell us, how, wh what's your response, especially to the fact that uh, um, or your response to this ban, especially the fact that you are a candidate and uh, running a campaign in such a place, what, how, wh what implication is it having? on you and your campaign. Uh, thank you, Charles. Just to correct you, I am not campaigning in Kawarole district. I am campaigning in Fort Porto Tourism City. Oh, okay. Remember? Thanks. Uh, yeah, the, uh, some part of Kawarole was carved off to form Fort Porto Tourism City, which is a district. Yeah. When they were listing districts, they listed Kavarole, they didn't list Fort Porto Tourism City. But I can imagine since it's a child born out of Kavarole, who were also affected somehow. Because they had one day on radio, somebody was clarifying that why they wrote Kavarole twice, the implicated, um, the implications were 
that even for the portal tourism city is affected. First of all, I have known that every candidate have gone through for portal city. I don't know any presidential candidate who has not been here. All of them have been here. So they shouldn't complain about that. The other thing that dissatisfies me so much, and my Secretary General has already mentioned it, is banning the NRM presidential candidate from carrying out any campaigns. Out of all the 11 candidates, he's the only single person I have not seen holding a rally. He has been observing SOPs to the latter. He's been calling only leaders, sitting at a social distance, and talking to them for a very short time, and leaving his message. And so, bundling them together with those ones who have been very reckless, very careless, very uncooperative, extremely callous, no humanity or feeling for other people's lives. You cannot claim that people follow me. If you don't want people to follow you, they will not. If you call a meeting and have a fewer people in your meeting, they will observe what you want them to do. Rubbish in, rubbish out. What you want people to do is what they will follow. I am so disappointed with Mr. Weissel. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, campaigns must be stopped everywhere. I have lost many of my family members to COVID. But I was shocked to see a presidential candidate downplaying COVID. Seriously speaking, you are a presidential candidate. You want to lead people you are downplaying COVID. Some people are saying it is just being used by the NRM. I see people running around, even presidential candidates without masks. I ask myself, example are you giving? As somebody who is aspiring to lead others, me, I think the Electoral Commission, apart from having not involved the stakeholders it has come far too late i have been worried so worried about these campaigns the electoral commission has not got any control over social media or mainstream media which is owned by private people private people are looking for business they can hate their business this is the peak at which they will make money. The, the, the laws of, 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 of the forces of demand and supply. The economist, uh, Dr. Gobi, will tell us right now you cannot get a radio station which will ask you for less than 500,000 for just minutes of airtime. And so this can be still computed because we are using fuel to reach out to the people. We are using cars that have got wear and tear. If we compute this money that we are using and buy airtime, I see people moving with a bigger motorcade. You are fueling the whole motorcade. You are paying for um, your agents or the, the team that somebody is, a presidential candidate is moving with to live in hotels. They are buying them food. If you compute all the money you are using, you can still go to the different media of communication and talk to the population. Because the carelessness which we have shown, the lack of respect for humanity, is hurting us. Some of us, we, we do not even understand why some presidential candidates, I won't name them because all the Ugandans know, who has been beckoning people to follow their motorcade, without any precaution. It is very dangerous, my people, and I think Electoral Commission should tighten, tighten to more districts. Because the moment you don't, they will become the epicenter. 
we are the same community moving to these other districts and we shall take COVID there and it will become the new epicenters of COVID. We must respect the rules of the game. There is nobody who is being blocked. By the way, this campaign started a long time ago, far, way back before COVID came. And most of these presidential candidates had been moving. I do not think there is a presidential candidate who is not known, especially to ask the voters above 18. We all know who the presidential candidates are. Even Katumba is known. Even the children know Katumba and they are not voters. So, the generals who are in this campaign, they are all known. Honorable Chagulani has been very cantankerous. Everybody knows him since he joined the politics, even far before he joined the politics, he was a musician. So we can't say that you need to reach out to people. That's even a lame excuse. Even if you move the whole country, you won't be able to meet half of the voters. Not even a quarter of the voters. Even if you call which rally, you won't, you won't meet everybody. People have commitments. And with COVID, many people don't show up for these rallies. And so nobody should use it as an excuse, blame government, electoral commission. is spot on. They have only brought this very late. I have been watching on NBS and NTV. And I guess they are the most watched TVs in this country. According to Stedman and Associates, that company that gauges which TV is the most watched or which radio is the most listened to, the opposition has got more airtime on these stations, more than the NRM. They can have three news items on only loop before they even bring in NRM. NRM is at the tail end of their news all the time and they show a, for a very short time but they give other candidates a lot of time that's already advertising them radios take for example radios in kampala i am not in kampala these days but i'm listening to most of them which are online they are always talking about the opposition the only thing they talk about the the, the incumbent and the president is abuses, insults, that's all I hear about our president. And we get hurt as NRM people. But we are confident that we are leading in this election. Because a lot of people have seen the way we have carried out our campaign, the way we have respected humanity, the way we have followed the SOPs, and I think we are the most respected party for now. So, colleagues, one of the things I am asking the Electoral Commission to do, let us not pretend about these things, that people don't know candidates, we are going to reach out to candidates. You simply want to play to the gallery, bring a crowd, then you are tear gassed, then you get a sympathy vote. That's all you are looking for, killing people's children. What will you tell these parents whose children you are rallying into your motorcade. Why don't you tell them to wear masks for heaven's sake? If you ask them to social distance, I know they would cooperate. You haven't done that. I have spoken to many people, especially Dr. Roda, Professor Roda, who we hosted on this very uh, show. She told us at the end of January, we shall be having more than 100,000 cases in Uganda at the rate at which we are getting infected. So please, obey the rules. Okay. Even us in the NRM, we are so sad that our president had not yet reached most of the places. But let us be his ambassadors. Let us walk house to house, like we said. Look for votes for our candidates. But the campaign must stop now if we want to lead a healthy uganda okay thank you um well, sir, there are a number of things i need you to respond to um especially um uh, your colleague uh, chairman mao has not come on uh, 
online yet. Uh, I think MTN is really being uh, um, being uh, scrambled or something. Um, the network is not very clear. My technical team says they are trying to get him, to reach him, but the line is not very clear and is on MTN. Um, but a number of opposition candidates have refused deliberately to follow any of the SOPs and you stand accused of that um, mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do, you, do you have any reason that that is being done and and do and you want to respond to some of the direct challenges from even starting with uh, the one of Ramadan Gobi where he says at least have some you know responsibility um, and, and, and sympathy and say that this is our message on COVID. We think that you need to follow the rules. You will need to follow the regulations, the SOPs, but this is what our difficulties are, that you don't even have, you know, at least courtesy to do that. Is that responsible enough of you as, as opposition? Why are you not following any of the SOPs? Um, first of all, it is very absurd and uh, unfortunate uh, that people don't listen, people don't follow, but they choose to. Are you saying people or are you saying it is absurd that we don't follow because you are part of the leadership? I am, I, am, I, am, I am giving you an answer in response to your question. <laughs> and my answer is, my leader has always rose to the occasion when there is need for him to rise to the same. The pandemic of corona that we are all talking about, COVID-19, there was no artist in the world who used his voice and talent to communicate about coronavirus. I have actually different told context. You, I have actually, uh, it, it, he was the first artist to have the hit record of one million views. And that's, that's if you true. listen to his message, there is no well-managed message internationally in a particular song that was accorded, uh, accolade like his. But because now people, his songs, his voice is not allowed on radio airplay, I don't know how many times you can even play it on UBC. So it is the reason why people will not understand that he has done his social responsibility to talk about and make sure that COVID is there. That is one. Two, the National Unity Platform, even at the stage when it was still a movement, it, it, it was still running purely with the movement system, uh, the people power movement. We produced over 500,000 masks. And some of them are in custody of the Uganda police. <laughs> yes, the Uganda police came to our headquarters. They ransacked everything. And inclusive of what they took were masks. Very absurd. Now, they turn around to say we are not minding about uh, COVID-19 and the SOPs. The first person to flout the SOPs was the Minister of Health. She's supposed to be in Luzida today because of all of those people who are dying. Because she showed the politicians where to go. We have ministers and even the president himself. I don't want us to be here as if we are putting on uh, sunglasses in the night. Because you know that the president has played uh, his siasa game that for him he is observing the SOPs where he meets uh, 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 the Secretary General and others and others. But then this side there is a charade of people of, 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 of to borrow the words of others of the Cold War of useful idiots who are moving on the line, the Bebekuls, uh, the Badios, and they are collecting a lot of people. They have banned, and, and, and when you get the narrative of the members of the National Resistance Movement, it is sickening when you listen to Honorable Margaret Muhanga, you wonder and you understand why there must have been hell. 
because the electoral commission never gave reason why they must have been hell because where would she belong i can't be in heaven and she's in heaven because the electoral commission never at any opportunity said it is because you are not observing the sops the electoral commission in my understanding detected that there is an increase there is a rise Therefore, before you even come to these districts, that is why they allowed us to go to other districts. Because if we were being uh, charged of an offense, then even those other districts, we would not have gone. He has been arrested. They are talking about blocking. My, our generation of flag bearer has been stopped from going to over 30 districts. Today, he has been uh, he's under arrest. We don't know where he is. He's our entire team of over 30 people, they have been brutally arrested, they have been beaten, including the media, and you think people are seated home, because you must always find where the problem is. The problem is simple. COVID-19 has been poorly managed. And at a certain session I said that probably since when the National Resistance Movement was coming there was AIDS, According to the history we have read, they are going also had to have a bigger disease. That is why COVID found them. Now, the management of COVID by the government is where we should focus. Not on the opposition. If you slope in the market, do you know the numbers of people there without masks? What happened to the masks? 82 billion Odongoso was passed under the regime under the stewardship of the good governance of the NRM, it was stolen. I heard the president speak in Wachiso very callously with laissez fair about corruption. If you saw the, the, his, his, his presentation there, they don't have the willingness. 59 billion to keep Ugandans in their home and have food was messed up. Now, people think in 14 days where there is a lot of mess, they have been mismanaged by a group of few people, they should use this as an opportunity to rise up at whatever cost and expense, but make sure, because what do you do when you have a democratic process 14 days away from you, to now make sure that better managers of your resources and this disease, the pandemic of COVID, come to office? Imagine if we are talking about a new Uganda managing the COVID-19 they have not constructed any foreseeable hospital they put up tents in nambole all of them were blown by rain those people have not been put to account they have the biggest expenditure of the covid 19 has gone to the security over three trillion shillings they took seven trillion of a whole budget of a quarter because government had been suspended now who is supposed to be charged of violating the SOPs. The SOPs are not about washing only the hands, social distancing. They also get to the responsibility of how you are managing the pandemic. The okay. institutionalism. Mr. Dongoso, since I, I, I was engaged with a lot, I would seek for some uh, a few, few to, to, to wrap it up. I, I want us to now, go for a break. Um, just hold it there. I want us to go for a break. When we come back, as we go into the second segment, I will give you one more minute to wrap up on that point. But let's take a break right now. Electoral Commission informs stakeholders that the period for campaigns is as follows. Presidential and parliamentary elections, 9th November 2020 to 12th January 2021. City, district local government councils elections, Lord Mayor, Mayors, Chairpersons and Councillors, 9th November 2020 to 18th January 2021. Municipality, City Division Chairpersons and Councillors Elections, 9th November 2020 to 23rd January 2021, Sub County, Town, Municipal Division Chairpersons and Councillors Elections, 9th November 2020 to 1st February 2021. 
Campaigns will be conducted from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and candidates are reminded to stick to their campaign programs as submitted to the commission. Voters are encouraged to listen to the candidates' manifestos in order to make informed decisions. While conducting campaign meetings, you should wear face masks, wash your hands and observe social distancing to limit the spread of COVID-19. This message is brought to you by the Electoral Commission. Shoppers, we have a variety of items like gift hampers, foods, garments, cosmetics, and all sorts of drinks. Enjoy your shopping experience this festive season at affordable prices in our fully stocked branches in the following areas in Tinder Stretcher Road. Opposite Makara Business School along Port Bell Road, Duster Street opposite Nakasero Market, and Garden City on Yusuf Lule Road. To all our customers and suppliers, we thank you for your continuous support. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2021. Stay safe, wash your hands, sanitize, and wear your mask always. 2020, what a year it has been. But hey, we have managed to survive together, haven't we? So let's celebrate together as we welcome a brand new year at the Pal of Africa New Year Celebrations 2020. With great live entertainment from the comfort of your living room. Featuring Shiba, Afrigo Band, John Black, Vrangi, Madrat and Chico, Mr. Tsumakula, Della Troop, Spice Diana, Waiki Bender and many others. Others. It's a date this Thursday, the 31st of December, 2020. We usher in the new year in... Welcome back from that break. Um, this is behind the headlines and uh, this edition coming just one day to the end of uh, the year that is going out, the year that was 2020 as they called it. So they called it in such a creative, nice way, but it turned out, you know, um, one of the worst years if you want to ask me um for humanity and uh, the tragedy is still going on and uh, especially with the covid and all its attendant problems um you know and uh, we are here discussing the implications of the suspension of uh, campaigns in some districts uh um in uganda and uh, some of them include mbarara kalungu um, the, there is Kavarole, Kasese, Kazo, Kampala, Wakiso, Tororo, Jinja, Luero, um, Masaka. Those are some of the districts in which uh, campaigns have been, um, the, the chairman I think used the word banned, and, uh, and, uh, but campaign suspended. Um, before we went for the break, we um first of all we are with the the secretary general of the electro of the of the nrm the right honorable justice lumumba kasule um then we are with uh waiswa um mufumbiro who is uh head of training and ideology um for the national unity platform um before we came on air i was joking with him that uh, recently he was in dp and then crossed over 
he, he, all his life he has been uh, spreading ideology of DP. Now he is in NOOP, and I was asking what is the ideology of NOOP. He hasn't yet told me, but that's for another day. Um, also in the studio is uh, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, who is a panelist on this show. Ramadan is a professor of economics at Makere University Business School. On the line, on through Zoom, rather, we have the Honorable Margaret Mohanga, all the way from uh, um, Fort Porto City, and she is an MP, current MP for Buraya County. We are, we are expecting Chairman Mao, but the line I'm told is not good. But we are expecting Chairman Mao, who is currently sitting um, standby uh, at uh, in, in Barara from Barara where he is campaigning and he's supposed to be joining the discussion from there. Um, that's why I'm giving you one minute so that you wrap up. But uh, I think for the sake of the viewer, I think you need, to, you need to clarify that your president is back at home um, so that uh, the message is got clearly because that's the information we got that he was he was he was yes his campaign was frustrated in in uh, Kalangala he didn't campaign but he was taken he was flown by the helicopter and uh, eventually taken home so you need to tell us that so that we keep the information rolling and rolling accurately I actually want to give very accurate information. I can attest now that personally and to very high, other high-ranking members of the Secretariat, we were not yet aware because, as you may realize, he was he, the last time we realized what was happening to him was in Arua. In, I was in, uh, in, in, in Kalangala with uh, a prison, uh, the, the prison van and an helicopter so i cannot confirm but what i can tell you that at his home is uh, a barracks of military personnel he is in communicado we cannot access him so i cannot be on national tv and say that i can get him or he's at home when actually i can't confirm that we have other 30 people arrested eddie mutua and and others we are also not sure of where they are though there are rumors that for them they have been taken to massacre um, that I had to clarify. That is the position. Uh, the last time, I, uh, by the time I was here, I was coming in here. Now, I wanted to tell you that we are not in this election, just like you see, you have said I was in the Democratic Party. But we as a generation discovered that probably certain institutions that we were in were formed to fight for certain things like independence. The Democratic Party was formed at the time of independence. Now, in the National Unity Platform, that political wing was formed to have and offer Ugandans a peaceful transition of power after decisively defeating President Museveni from office in the 2021 general election. Our candidate is not... Uh, he is the most popular candidate. He is the person whom people have been paying to see. But he has a message of freedom. The reason why we borrowed sometime, we, the reason why we borrowed Bobby Wine to give us Chagulani to run for presidency, because we knew that in such circumstances you needed a very, very popular, talented, but also visionary leader to help you propel you against a dictator like you are seeing the election we are in. It has all the signs of a dictator. Our candidate is being arrested. We have recorded death of our very inner circle people, the torture, uh, the brutality. Again, because if you hear people talk about humanity, you are, you are talking about COVID killing people. But we have uh, a Francis Senteza who is lying in, a, in, in his village, never to come back. The mother had all the hopes in Francis. He was murdered in cold blood by the state, by people we serve to protect us. Now, when Ugandans look at the cost, what do you think would be the cost of the people of, of Masaka to do whatever it takes to unseat the dictator in the 14 days to remain? Because it is constitutional. It is constitutional to have an election. 
and that is strictly what we are advocating for we have been from day one one of our principles one of our the things that they should rely on asking us in the near in the new uganda the accountability is ensuring that democracy is democracy not a resemblance of democracy okay um honorable um honorable justin um let's let's start to look at uh, probably the way forward you um the the, the, some of the issues you laid down are, are very pertinent and uh, and very convincing, especially when you look at the fact that uh, you know this is a process which is supposed to be all embracing it 's supposed to be participatory it 's supposed to be consultative, and uh, like you rightly said, you were not you alongside the rest were not uh, consulted way forward. Do you think that you're going to, apart from iPod, um, the, have you had a meeting as uh, um, participants in this race, um, calling on maybe um, other parties and saying that uh, we need to raise the issues together and then bring on board iPod? Or what, how do you think you're going to handle this going forward now? Today I had a discussion with... Uh, Right Honorable Ruhakana, Right Honorable Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda. The Prime Minister. The, uh, this, this time not as Prime Minister, but mm -hmm. as the chairperson of the National Consultative Forum for all registered political parties. You know that one is also under the Electoral Commission, so all registered political parties are members. And some of them have also fronted the candidates at different levels. And the uh, he said, let me think about it and uh, see, I'll get back to you. Because all that is in an effort of talking to people <coughs> so that uh, we, we, everybody is, uh, we move together as a team because uh, our intentions are more or less the same, aspiring to take leadership of the country and f except we who want to keep it, but of course renewed. So the issue of... Uh, consulting or talking to others. We've talked to political actors and we won't stop. But what I also think is uh, the country should know that the Electoral Commission acted within, their, the, the, within the law. They have the powers. But all that we are talking about is let's have a discussion with the intention of simpli simplifying their work and our work to easy work for everybody. So for us as NRM, we had already launched the village-based campaigns of door-to-door, house-to-house, peer-to-peer. So we are intensifying that. And uh, as we also see what we can do, especially in issues to do with the, how do we get airtime for our other candidates. The presidential, we had made arrangements. Maybe now we can add on and intensify, but also... How do we use other, um, tech, the different technologies available so that we reach out to the voters. And then, <clears throat> and another thing that I would think is a way forward, because as leaders we are supposed to think positively, offer solutions, not to keep writing off things like uh, my, what I will call under iPod, sister parties, my sister parties. The, even... They, they rubbished COVID, but even after rubbishing COVID, even after suffering it, you just them disappearing for some days, then they appear after 10 or 15 days, and they, they open eyes widely, and they don't want to tell the country what they've gone through, and yet they want to offer leadership. Let's be honest as leaders. Let's be honest. It is not that you can only talk what pleases you? No. And it's after talking that we as leaders, that we shall be able to work together as, as, as leaders at the time to fight stigma. Because COVID, nobody has full knowledge about it. And there are some like underlying or uniform signs, but they are not applicable. Not everybody has gone through the same. 
So the more we talk about it, the more we come out to tell people about it, that's when people will, 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 will understand and that is when we will be offering leadership and helping the ordinary people. So I want to bring sim sympathies from NRM to those who have lost, where we have lost lives because of COVID, but even uh, other lives that have gone this year. But also call on leaders as chairperson of the iPod Council, uh, Mr. Raiswa. What I want to say is that we are looking for votes. But when you say they are using the SOPs of COVID to undermine others, you hurt those you want to vote you. So if people, those who have been confirmed that the, the life has gone because of COVID, if they hear such comments, you will not be adding to the numbers that you are looking for, and yet the winner takes it all, you know, according to our current law. So for me, I would think you may have started off as uh, in your party, not believing that there was there is COVID, but you have seen those who have died. You have even seen as leaders people who used a microphone, shared a microphone, and all of the three have gone to meet their creator, including senior leaders in this country. We should do. We should do. Yes, we should. Have, we could have said you could have said or heard that as at the beginning, before you had seen people dying at uh, the mass of COVID. Then you you, you can do understand. Come out and say this happened, but we, are, we have now proved it is this is there, so that we all work together as political leaders. As we have our political competition, we are all working together to save lives. Because at the end of the day, you want to come and lead those who are breathing. You don't want to come and lead those who who are long, who are gone. So as the electoral commission is uh, receiving our letters and listening to us because I know they are listening to us. Electoral Commission simplify our work and make our work easy as we make your work easy. But as that all goes on, I want to request all political actors, who, those candidates, voters, civil society, Security, please let's all act in the interest of Ugandans to save lives, but also let's also do things knowing there is tomorrow. After elections, we shall have Uganda. It takes two to tango. When we are talking of the violence, the excessiveness of whatever side, Yes, security is supposed to protect our lives, but they are also human beings. Security, you are professionals. You are supposed to subdue if some, somebody if somebody is not armed. But also, let's not provoke them. They are human beings. Let's not provoke them. Because at the end of the day, their actions affect our lives. But equally, our actions as political actors affect their lives. Most important, the way you, a journalist and a mere politician, feel, would feel pain if security put a lot of pressure and exerted excessive power on, on you, or even used whatever they have in their hands, armed by the taxpayers' money through the law. We should remember they are our sons and daughters, but we are also their brothers and sisters. So where is the challenge? If you have been told to leave this place and come this side, please go. Don't go insulting somebody. You may even be insulting somebody who has been on duty, waiting, cleaning or keeping that place, and uh, you find somebody going off board in terms of professionalism. But also, we have also seen some candidates who have dressed some indisciplined people in uniforms, I mean, with, with the word press, with the word press. But when they tell the journalists, please go back 
and register so that there is professionalism. We are seeing your professionalism, the code of conduct going down, especially in areas where the tension is on. And then you hear some people saying, no, 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 no. What's wrong with me going to register with the Uganda Teachers Association? I'm a teacher by profession. I should go and prove that I'm a teacher so that they're able to tell who is a teacher and who is not a teacher. I don't see any, and the only issue would be how fast are they going to do given the hectic time so that it is done uh, very fast so that you go continue to go and do your work. But most importantly, let's all act knowing there is tomorrow, but let's also act knowing that your actions hurt, your actions should not hurt the other one, but also make sure you don't hurt another one. Okay. Um, let me, let me, I, Honorable Margaret Muhanga, I'm coming to you, but after, after your colleague Ramadan Gobi, um, but also before I bring in Ramadan, I, I need to, I, I am, my, my, my good friend Joel Senyonyi, um, I have read here on his Twitter handle, he says, I've been able to speak to Honorable Chagulanyi, he's at home in Magere, his home is surrounded by so many military personnel like it is a barracks he's also disturbed that everyone he went with to kalangala is detained he has instructed our lawyers to follow up till our comrades are set free um so is uh, on twitter joel senyoni the spokesperson of uh, national unity platform is confirming that uh, Honorable Chagulanyi is uh, is back home at uh, at uh, in in Magere. So that's the, the 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 latest I'm reading here, um, and I think it came about an hour um, or so already when we were already on air. Um, Mr. Mr. Ramadan, going forward, um, there is what many of us are not looking at. Um, people are only focused, and it's understandable, people are mostly focused on the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. But in these 11 or 15 districts, there are so many local council candidates, yeah. so many uh, mm -hmm. parliamentary election candidates, mm -hmm. so much had already been invested in, people had organized rallies, people had organized gatherings, people had paid for services and all that. Um, the, how, how do you think these guys should handle this, um, especially with the Electoral Commission? Or do you think it should be handled generally under the ambit of the iPod uh, that, uh, that uh, the Secretary General is, was referring to? Yes. Um, you know, you know, Charles. This is a whole economy. Charles, elections or politics is really terrible. Terrible in a our own settings, these settings, and we have discussed these in all these chairs for some time now. Because you know, uh, look what, for example, what is happening in the country in terms of enforcement of SOPs vis-a-vis -vis the activity of ele electioneering. Because electioneering is about meeting your supporters, it's about mobilizing, it's about winning over, you know, people to your side. And much as we are so much obsessed with the, uh, the election between the presidential candidates, or in particular actually between the incumbent and the Mr. Chagulani, there are loads of other people you have mentioned who are now being victims of the same uh, 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 regulations being enforced by the Electoral Commission. We have these MPs. I know for them the constituencies are a bit uh, 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 smaller in size. They may decide to have alternative ways of meeting their, uh, their, 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 their supporters door to door. They may go knock door to door and uh, talk to them. I don't think that electoral commission has stopped it because they talked of meetings. A uh, door-to-door -door campaigns is not a meeting. I, I don't think that if we are three or four people 
in someone whose house that's a meeting, that avenue is still there. But also the scientific one. I, I, I really believe that people should uh, leverage the media. Mass media is very effective in sending the message to the people. But that said, why sometimes you, you have to to sympathize with the wise one and, and, and others is these are the activities which the other activities other than politics which have not been affected in the same way. I know that electoral commission does not deal with the other things. For them, they made the announcement, they made uh, this decision where they have the jurisdiction. And that's, you know, the campaigns, the political campaigns. But now, like he said, there are other activities going on and they are having even bigger numbers of crowds than the politics itself, the parties. These weddings now, they are back to normal. I see sometimes videos where people are dancing and I think uh, sometimes I thought the videos were old before COVID. Nobody has a mask. People are even back to dancing when they are holding hands, no social distancing. When you go to funerals, they are back to normal. Let alone these markets which are open. And the, those SOPs which had been put in place by Minister of Health, they are not enforced. People are not sanitizing, people don't have masks. I, I, I don't agree with the, 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 even I didn't agree at, right at the beginning, this idea of buying people masks. The mask is uh, the cheapest thing which many of these people who are saying they don't have masks because government didn't give them. They are drinking alcohol and the bottle <laughs> of beer is more expensive than a mask. <laughs> but uh, now that government had the, opted to give out masks, and indeed like he asked, where is the accountability for those masks? Also is very, very important. Why has government failed to provide them? But to me, the most important thing, why have they failed to enforce the COVID SOPs? Government should help the electoral commission and the come in to do their own part. Because the Electoral Commission has enforced the SOPs on the political side. But the other socio-economic aspects of our lives have also to be regulated such that COVID does not really kill Ugandans. Um, I wanted you a bit to correct Mr. Weiss on one aspect where at least I'm more conversant than his politics. And that is the the numbers. He talked of the COVID expenditure by government as 7 trillion, over 7 trillion and uh, released and the security has 3 trillion and so on. I think he's talking about the national budget uh, altogether because the total COVID expenditure stimulus is 2.6 trillion and of that you will find that it includes all the aspects of the fiscal stimulus which the Minister of Finance announced and the, a number of supplementary budgets have been uh, uh, taken to Parliament to implement it. It also includes the monetary itself, the monetary stimulus by the central bank. Those are kind of uh, implicit, implicit relief it gave to the business community and it also includes the health sector expenditure the supplementary is given to the health sector to fight the COVID. But uh, that does not rule out the uh, accountability aspect. I was actually just to give uh, for clarity, I was speaking about, you see when COVID, uh, there is a quarter, we must talk about the 7 trillion. But no, what I, I'm telling you, I am giving a bigger picture. Yes. That is as a result, I am, I, when I look at COVID, I just don't look at it with all those i look at the entire governance yeah so i was looking at the bigger picture of that time no no, no i wanted to, at least uh, i wanted to clarify to the viewer oh. such that he doesn't think that government has spent seven trillion <laughs> to fight covid it's no, the I, national I, it's the, the, the entire quarterly release to run you know the country the government yeah. in, in all aspects mm. but not necessarily the covid alone 
and uh, uh, and and for that you need also to know that government had to actually review the budget itself because the budget was prepared pre-COVID, before COVID the came. 45. Yes, the, the, the 45 trillion. trillion, of which actually the real budget is about 20, 24 trillion, what we call the discretionary budget. The rest, they are, they are figures which economists and financial, these accountants, uh, we call, including amortization, including, you know, the, the, the law requires government to put all those figures that's why it ends up into 45 and so on yeah. but the the, the 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 fact is government has spent uh, less than two point uh, and actually most of this money hasn't been released not most some of it uh, uh, for example they announced about a trillion to be given to udb to help the business community uh, they, they, they haven't yet uh, released the whole of it. They released less than 500 billion for that. There is also an SME recovery fund which is being uh, put in place. So uh, those things need to be uh, really uh, uh, understood in their context. And finally, to, uh, from me on this matter, I think uh, to me the aspect now of uh, this election, the, the campaigns in the, in the remaining about 15 days, 14. 14 days, should be maximized by going back, all the parties going back, in, in my view, and see how best can you reach out to the voter who is undecided. Because of course, definitely there are those who are decided, but there are those who are not yet decided. And reach them out. Are they with, many? With the, oh, yeah. Like uh, Honorable Margaret said. Oh, yeah. Let many, me tell many you. Many people have made up their mind almost. Uh, I don't think so. They are, the people have those wavering minds up to the <laughs> point. Even, <laughs> even when they are in the basin. I like uh, to uh, that wavering minds. Oh, yeah. They, they, <laughs> they are not sure whom they should give their vote. So you need, you need to convince them by, uh, and, and the, the most creative person or party is going to really, because now you have already worked on those who are on the ideology of NUP versus ideology of NRM, ideology of DP, ideal, I don't know whether there is now a line which separates the ideology of DP from NUP since the, the ideologue is the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ideology of these other parties. I am not the same person. <laughs> oh. DP was formed for independence purposes. Okay. And this one is to unseat the dictator. So those are two different ideologies. <laughs> one is to unseat a dictator, the other one is to achieve independence. Uh. So what are the are point you are saying that to unseat a dictator we had to have noob. That's an ideology. We had to have noob. The point I wanted to we make is that, that please invite me. We will discuss please, that. Please, 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 yeah. that will go be please. So Charles, uh, finally, the point I wanted to make in that is that there are those people who have already decided, who are already saying, me, I'm going to vote this one. Mm. Me, I'm going to vote the other. But now these other people who are still there, they need you to be more creative in how you are going to reach them out and the and really convince them and the, to me I think issues the issues which are affecting the people now they are the key aspects which must be addressed I'm a person who is more interested in the evidence based analysis of issues what are the key issues which affect an average younger person in Uganda today is very very critical is it that slogan of Removing a dictator? New Uganda. Is it the job which this younger person is looking for? He has finished, a, you know, a, his degree or diploma. Where his parents sold the, you know, the cattle to take them to school. And now they would want to really get some money and uh, look after their parent before the parent dies of COVID. And someone comes and you, the only point you have to tell that younger person is that these people are using COVID as an excuse to stop us from removing a dictator. So me, I think 
the issues now needed to come in in this campaign and the way those issues are going to be structured and sold out to the public using the methods which the Electoral Commission is allowing us to use, they are going to be very critical in determining who is likely to win this election. Okay, um, we need to start doing the, 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 the um, almost the conclusion. I will start that with the Honorable Margaret. Honorable Margaret? Yeah. Um, I, I need you to respond to some of the issues that were raised in uh, two minutes and then the third minute I need you to ask the guests a question. Um, I am so happy that uh, Dr. Gori has really summarized everything for Waiswa. Waiswa must note that even in that studio, he's the only one who speaks without your mask. That one shows you what type of party or political organization he belongs to. Everybody is speaking through their mask. Everybody is respecting the SOPs. Why don't you speak through your mask? That shows already your defiance your lack of respect for human life. What if you came in that studio with COVID? Won't you leave it everywhere? Because your droplets are now flying over. Secondly, I think there are some things we don't even have to argue about. Everyone is calling upon the government to enforce the SOPs. Who enforces it? Is the police? It is, we cannot even involve the army. But where the police is overstretched, yes, we do call in the army. But where did the personal responsibility go? Why can't people pay, take responsibility for their own lives? Should somebody keep telling you, please don't die, don't go here, because you will die? I have been attending functions here. And sometimes I ask myself, why is everyone here? People come without masks. And when you ask that, please, wear your mask, you are seated to somebody you do not live with, oh, they pick it from the pocket. Those who are wearing them are having them on the chin. The, also the excuse of government having not given people masks. I don't even know why government pledged to give people masks. Because even before government talked about masks, people had them. Like Dr. Gobi said, that even those that you find in bars drinking every day, they drink more money that can buy five masks. So why can't somebody take personal responsibility, avoid a bottle of beer and buy a mask? Or a glass of water and buy a mask? You see, each and everything the opposition says is they are looking for a scapegoat. Look at, at, at that guy. He's not wearing a mask. And he's so happy not to wear it amid three other people who are wearing a mask. You are an adult. Does somebody have to tell you what to do? I can tell you, if you continue like that, you will never lead Uganda. And my simple question to you is what is the ideology of NUP? In simple terms, tell us what you stand for, rather than removing a dictator. And I do, you don't even know what the word dictator means anymore. So tell us, what does NUP stand for? What is your ideology? Rather than running around, rallying young people, they are enslaved. The one who is telling people that they are enslaved has thrived through this government started just a talent without very, with modest education, started using his talent, and he's one of the richest people in Uganda. When you tell others, it is this government that has completely enslaved you. How and in which way? When it is the same government that has propelled you to success. Anyway, Ugandans understand. Whatever lies you will tell, Ugandans understand. And on 14th of January, 
you were in for the rude awakening you will get a hood shock because those young children that are running around your motorcade they are children of 17 16 non voters who are on holiday for covid you will get a rude awakening you will not sleep that night you will cry fall as usual they have rigged our votes you have not campaigned to get any votes you have only campaigned to kill ugandans and i wish you could take personal responsibility ask for forgiveness from ugandans for the crowds you have been gathering and my last question maybe should go to my secretary general i want to thank you the honorable kasula lumumba and one of the messages you should insist on on your tv programs are our foot soldiers that are moving house to house i've seen people here who are doing a very good job and they envisage a situation that every candidate has already got people on the ground who can move for them so you can't keep saying you know i want to reach out to to, to, to the voters you can't reach out to everybody so use your people that have been seeing you meeting in the in the countryside let them walk house house and look for your votes which are not even there you are the people who are looking for votes they are not there that one i can tell you there is nobody who can vote for people who have such characters ugandans are getting disgusted ugandans are learning that you are playing to the gallery imagine a whole presidential candidate mugging a policeman an officer actually not even a, a policeman but a police officer and taking off his mask and you want to lead ugandans what if his hands were contaminated with covid wasn't he going to infect that policeman and you want to lead ugandans with such characters such behaviors you don't wear a mask yourself you stand before a policeman and take off his mask do you know that, that when you touch a policeman you are touching the state because the policeman is working on behalf of the state i've seen so many clips where you want to run over security personnel and you want to take over the state please check your behavior check your character check your behavior check your character check your, your your senses and then you can lead later but not now because you are angry okay um, my my question i had not even said my question because i am very angry at loop and your behavior my question to my secretary general <laughs> is that how are you planning to strengthen the door-to-door -door campaign thank you very much and a blessed new year who wants to go first? Weiswa or Secretary General? I want to thank the viewers. And as we come towards the end of the year, I want to congratulate those who have been able to make achievements. And I want to, for those who have gone to miss the Creator because of COVID or the other causes, May their souls rest in eternal peace. But as we take on the new year, let's have positive energy. One thing I want to tell you, Ugandans, is that some of the people who think they have the monopoly of violence have forgotten that NRM, under the leadership of President Yuri Kaguta Museveni, on the 12th of May 2016, he took oath as a president protect Ugandans, protect their lives and protect their properties so as what as you plan whatever you are planning to do know there is uganda under the leadership of nrm and it's the responsibility of nrm under the leadership of president m7 to make sure that whatever violence you are planning doesn't happen but also, what I want to remind Ugandans that when they decided to have that violence where you had, that was a rehearsal, and it was an awakening call to everybody, the state, the Ugandans, the people who are in Uganda, political actors and, and, and non-political actors. 
But what I want you to to note that is that when it happened, my our sons and daughters who are on the roadside, those who are burning tires, didn't discriminate. They went on to rob from those who are on border borders. If you, the border border man didn't have uh, money to give them, they would take the phone. If the person, they went on also to rob the person on foot. If you had nothing to, t to, to give them, they would slap you, they would beat you. They were robbing those who were in big vehicles, the V8, the Primo, and uh, even those on bicycles. Meaning we should all embrace peace because violence does not discriminate. That rehearsal was more of a blessing in this guys. I want to condemn violence for the lives that were lost. May their souls rest in peace. But let's have positive attitude as we enter positive energy as we enter 2021. Remember on the 14th of January, as Secretary General of NRM, vote for His Excellency Yori Kabuta Museven. Leadership is not something like Vaseline. You smear today, tomorrow you change the Vaseline. Sometimes you may smear the Vaseline, but may even spoil your skin. Well, sometimes you may smear Vaseline, that may affect your eyes, but you may never even open your eyes. Look and examine which Vaseline is better for this country. NRM flag bearers, wherever you are, as you campaign for yourself, campaign for His Excellency Yuri Kabuta Museven. Some of you are there saying, community, some people planted in the community, in some few communities, they say, look for your vote, don't ask for anybody's vote. That one would not even vote you. Insist and in campaign for His Excellency Yuri Kabuta Museven. Because he's the person who we as NRM people gave the flag to lead us. Make sure you save the head before you even save other parts of the body. When you have the head, the command, till you command the rest of the parts of the bodies, even with the, some, maybe some little injuries, they will recover and we shall have the command post. My, chair, my public secretary for the NRM Parliamentary Caucus, Honorable Margaret Mohanga has asked me that how are we going to intensify? Margaret, we are say, we, I'm just coming from a meeting of a task force now. Uh, that's where I've been. And uh, we, the task force is discussing how do we intensify the door-to-door, -door, not only in these areas where the electoral commission has suspended the political activities, but in the whole country. And we also we are also discussing how do we mobilize people to go and vote, but also how do we protect the vote, how, how do we handle the after the vote, because it is all our responsibility as NRM first, but also as a party that has fronted the candidates everywhere. But what I want to assure you, Margaret, is that it's only NRM that has candidates at all levels in big numbers. Just an example, parish councillors, parish councillors, out of the, the 10,600 parishes, NRM has 10,558 councillors we fronted. And we are competing with the people who, when we talk of the grassroots mobilizers at this, in this election, the parish councillor, FDC has 1,900, about 1,900. Nope has 1,500. Those are the people we are competing with. Okay. Flagger bearers campaign for, the, for His Excellency Yori Kabutam 7, campaign for all the flagger bearers. And please, we went into multi party politics. We went into multi party politics. Those who think they want to support others, or for, for they will support this one for this post, I will not support this one. That is a sign of somebody who has not understood the, the, the ideology of NRM, where what is most important is 
patriotism for you to be to, 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 to really know that there is patriotism you practice it by teamwork unity and valuing everybody but also going to those to compete you are competing with to request them for a vote to vote you and vote the candidates of your I have party. a lot of uh, okay. invoices to deliver um, to the party <laughs> Invoice is coming to the secretariat. <laughs> Please, my my marketing manager, deliver invoice to Secretary General's uh, secretariat tomorrow. Uh, why so? I respond to the question that uh, Margaret asked you, and then I will take a question to both of you from Gobi, and we close. First of all, she 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 did a lot of name calling, and. Uh, I remembered the person of Margaret Mohanga that I read about in newspapers. I don't know what would be the moral yardstick of UBC hosting everybody, but the parliamentary inquiry indicated that UBC's problems are part of Margaret Mohanga's <laughs> uh, being a, klep a kleptocrat of the regime. So she cannot speak better than what she has her performance now in fact her check is now written that is her duty um she sold the goats in billions to get land here of ubc people know her they remember her and she thinks that because she's speaking for the oligarchy she has let's get let, let's keep it let's Th keep these it, uh, are facts and i think let, it is let's my keep time. it within the issues it is an issue because I am coming now to the person because she has been also looking at the character and I am also doing the same and in fact But how was the inquiry concluded? How was the inquiry concluded? The inquiry of what? Oh, the inquiry into the issue you are raising no, about her. Uh, how was it concluded? She's as guilty as she is. That and, is to our and how is that related to COVID? They are, they are very, no, she looked at the character of the candidate and I wanted to tell her that her character does not even defeat to be anywhere speaking about morality and i should assert that to her she has a history of plunging and is the ubc land there anymore um we shall check okay this. so um, now so let, let back to the point let me bring in the it was very important you see when people begin to dismiss when you talk about the mess of the country you people are in kampala can you give me one road in Kampala, if you're driving from UBC, that you're going to have a stretch where they are not digging it up, where they are not, where there are no potholes, 50 kilometers outside Kampala. Give it to us. Yesterday when the president was speaking, these people don't listen to their president. He told you there is a problem that they have not been doing. That is his message today. He says the NRM has not been doing their part to Ugandans. He told you, the president, that there is a problem with the governor. He gave you an example. Let me tell you, he said in Wachiso, 35 years, getting the young people out of poverty, before even reaching the age of 80, 3 million people. Do you know how many people they, they, went, they looked after? 10,000. In his own admission, he saw it was nothing they were doing. They had done nothing about it. In the 21st century, you are talking about a myoga with our generation. And you think that we are going to listen to you because we have been respectful to your generation and you think we are going to allow you to plan our generation. We want to think better for our country, reconstruct it, make it admirable. And they ask about our ideology. We, before we even talk about our ideology, there is the cardinal principle of our rights, and that is freedom. We have no freedom. Whereas those who are stealing from this regime have freedom. Let me tell you, have you investigated the cost and amount of money that was used in the purchase of oxygen cylinders? Do you know the people to who that money went to? It is not about sitting here and speaking merrymaking because people are putting... She does not even have the intelligence to understand that the mask I came, on, I came putting on is made at home. Why do we have them made at home? We want to have our people, like, not unlike the government, now they are running away from their responsibility because we gave you our money, 82 billion. 
it stopped being played it became a duty because we gave you taxpayers money but you are so senseless and inhuman to accountability that you don't even give a damn about it but so you excuse us no, but when when no when, from below, government has distributed how so many masks 20, have been distributed 25 and at what cost 25 million Masks. At what cost? But maybe the question would be, is that, and where? Is that enough and for where all? And where are the 25? Is that we enough for, for 42, all? Madam Secretary General. 25 million. We released masks. the money for enough of Ugandans. And this has been in the... It is, at, it is in Parliament. The food was rotten. This was said by the Speaker. And then people have moral authority to come and speak about uh, morality. People are talking about accountability and character. Robert Chagulani sent him in one of his relics he told us to request Chagulani and indeed we have done so we are riding on his long standing popularity in such a messed up election the NRM accepts it is messed up that the chairman is not in charge he's not being even the minimum of consulting and you expect Ugandans and our generation to come and dilly dally with that mess we have a mission, and our mission is to answer the dictator. And I want to tell the country, we are not a violent group. We are not violent at all. In fact, we are the lady cream of our generation. That is why, even at the worst of situations, when our own has been murdered, my friend Udongo, so you're a journalist, Ashraf is fighting for his life. He was shot that was doing it. his job. No. But it was a canister. This, it wasn't a, a bullet. A canister, yes, it was. A canister, a canister is what? It is thrown or it is shot also? It, what it, are you saying? It, Excuse it, me. No, and not, you think that is no, right? No, Do you know that he's in coma? He's not yet speaking? Yes, that's Do unfortunate. Do you know that his brain has that's been That's unfortunate up? and we are praying that, uh, so, that, no, no, he, it's, that it's, his it, life this, is spared. That he shouldn't, we shouldn't lose you him. You see, when you are in a country where religious leaders are speaking, where witchcrafts are speaking, witchcraft. where uh, witch doctors, sorry, where witch doctors are speaking, <laughs> where everybody is speaking, yeah, because everybody is speaking about the mess that is around, and people don't want us to talk about it. There is, he spoke about statistics. We don't go so. Take time. Hmm. There is a whole generation. I had the president now refer to people as street boys and what go and understand what is their plight a few people are taking us hostage let me tell you in wind, 20, wind up, because in, we have to bring in let me Bobby. give you just a story in just two, one second in, in, in 10 seconds in 2007 i had an opportunity i think to i, I met I, I met with i was around the surroundings of uh, uh gaddafi hmm. and Two zero seven. I think it was two zero seven. Afro Arab. How old are the you? The Afro Arab. I have been around. That is why they don't know us who are after them. We have been around. The Afro Arab. I am saying Afro Arab. I was part of the organizers. Two zero seven. I was part of the one in Munyonyo. I was part of the organizers no, of no, Afro no. Arab. Was that the one of Munyonyo? The one of Munyonyo. Yes. Was this man. Yes, I was. Part, I was a guild president of Mukono University, and I was chosen to be part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can you can research with that i remember one. actually you i can, was i was in new vision and i hosted a talk show about that uh, conference. you can you can ask yeah, those who are around you are not younger people. St no we so are, you are not young no people. we are younger but we have been alive <laughs> to this place for a very long time so why are you not so young <laughs> no I, I i i am not young per se. i cannot say i'm young i can stand for president i'm yeah. standing for mp now yeah that's true but i also want to tell you that thanks, so, thanks to the that thanks to the lumumbas who, listen, listen. who amended the constitution no, to allow it, now that is why I, I have been around you have hosted me on a talk show yes i know i have been around fighting the dictator for a very long time despite my age because yeah. I put on those lenses after my senior six. Okay. Yes. Good. So it, it takes. It, it so takes you said they tell us the story. It the Secretary General should be the last person to know because <laughs> even at my age I have known her personally. Yeah. So I am not one that they would <laughs> even President him seven. I have met him. It's personally. okay. But so also, first tell us the story. Finish the story. So you said you were around Gaddafi, the around Mama Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Yes. Was coming to Uganda. Yes. And he tonight, actually he attended that conference. Yes. Yeah. As the following day when he was coming. Yeah. 
his team, his inner team. There was one called, I think it was called Abdu something. Mm. And he was a bit young. We got along so quickly. So the challenge was that at the time, the organizers had not got him uh, his accreditation. He had, no, he had not been well advertised, the pictures, the okay. billboards. Yeah. So there was a rush to make sure that when he arrives here, he's everywhere. Mm. Okay, that is the time they, they, they put up something, I think, in, uh, in, in, in Katonga, and then there was a lot of fighting of the military forces. I was watching all that. Mm. But the story I'm telling you is that every person who has grown mm. and is no longer sure of himself, you'll always be compelled to market them. The way they are marketing, now you see the statistics and the science when you hear the Secretary General speak the way she's speaking. She's asking candidates not to be intimidated from asking uh, votes for their president. For us in Nope, it is different. If I don't because speak about my candidate, if I don't speak about my candidate, then I am not as loyal to the struggle as it is. It is simple. The people power. Our ideology is enshrined in that. Uh -uh. You, you, power. You, so you, I want to tell Ugandans that on the 14th hmm. of January 2021, the message of freedom that has been spread all over this country shall will be available uh, for you to decide upon on the 14th. Go out in big, big numbers and we give the dictator and the regime a bloody nose. Okay. Um, Gobi, please make a statement. Um, uh, make a make a statement. Uh, way forward, and then ask a question, and we get out of no, this let me, place. Let me just ask questions because uh, I think we are behind time. Yeah. To the uh, Secretary General NRM, you know there is that uh, block of now um, people where you are likely to find what we call a sympathy vote. And this sympathy vote is mainly on account of how the SOP for COVID have been enforced. As a ruling party, how differently do you think the COVID SOPs could be enforced against the those who are so adamant that they will not follow them and they are challenging you of course you are in the government you are the ones who are enforcing these rules how differently do you think you can enforce them without giving them an advantage of getting that sympathy vote because lately I think we have uh, uh, lost a number of people uh, through this process of enforcement of the rules perhaps even than what uh, the COVID in those days could have claimed and to Mr. Waiswa why have you as NOOP failed to surprise the regime as you, you prefer to call it or the dictator by playing the game by the easy rules such that you see what will actually be the excuse for government to uh, treat you the way you would want um, the public now to see as high-handedness and so do you think you would lose that sympathy vote by playing by the rules or you are just doing it because you don't have any other way of okay mobilizing for votes why so you start I so that the social gender in the glass of the violence that has been orchestrated to us by the state and as one of those who have been on the trail I want to tell you we have about take one minute one okay. minute to respond to be very fast about it is that one we are in every meeting in a constant personally in a constant discussion with the highest leveled person of security in that area and in most cases it is the rpc the place is secured 
with advisement of the police. Our candidate, from the time he, he, he leaves, uh, he starts his route to his destination, he is fully manned by the police. Ten police patrol cars, and that is uh, about 120 police officers, and all those patrol cars are having the, the cream of the police because the ranks are either is the OC operations, is the other PC, is the overall operation, something they have even created new designations. Now, because as I've said, you are either being handled by Mwesigwa or Unganizi, or you are with Tusingwire, or you are with, uh, with, uh, with Indiakmana, because these are the leaders and they are the ones that are in charge of the police. Mm -hmm. Now, this may the have... brothers to Bobby Wine's wife. Huh? No, yes. Okay. Uh, no, we are we are we are constant that it, if <laughs> if, if they are the leaders and I'm saying names of the leaders. Okay. Now, maybe maybe Mr. Now, Wiseau, why I was asking you. Yes, we, are, because we, are, the, we are. Let me let me first clarify. The leaders to wind up. The EC, mm. who are the referees of this game, mm. have cautioned you. Have raised the yellow cards twice, mm. saying you are not playing by the rules. Mm. And I'm asking, mm. so uh, whatever you are explaining, the how the security is a toothless backing dog. Okay. The EC is a toothless backing dog. It's not in charge of this election. Somebody else is. And that is why it is important for Ugandans to understand that this is their election. Okay. Thank you. Um, Secretary General, respond and we close. When uh, Mr. Weiswa says the EC is a toothless backing dog, I think the EC <laughs> gave us regulations and, uh, and uh, they gave us the statutory instrument that had been signed by the Minister of Health. But when it came to enforcement, they now they want, took it as a blanket. Yes, they would have handled one candidate one by one. And I think that's why he's saying that. They should have handled one by one because when people were against the, going against the rule, the, 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 the SOPs, they don't do it as a group, they do it as individuals. Because even when there are issues to do with the, 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 the souring numbers in Kampala and in the surrounding and those districts mentioned, for us as NRM would have still followed the SOPs. The issue asked by Dr. Gobi, how would, would, would these SOPs be implemented other than the way they, they are being implemented? One, I would, I would think that we should have used different institutions and uh, different uh, people who fall in different categories. Now, like, issues to do with the, religi the, 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 the religious institutions and our religious practices, the government would have had a discussion, the scientists, mm. with the people heading religious institutions, people in these institutions, to understand that some of our religi the practices we do in our in our religions are some of them that prop that increase the spread of the COVID, so that it is them to understand it and be able to say, let's stop doing this for now, let's do this, then government coming up to tell them we stop this, we, we, yet they, they may not have understood why government is telling them to do that. But if they have understood it, they would even be able to, to, to discern which one should we do, which one should we not, what we, we, the government may know or may not even know, or the scientists may know that is done by these people, either in daylight or in the evening or in the morning that we may not know. Secondly, we would have brought in teachers and since it was something new to the community, made them to understand this issue, then we send them out to the communities to tell the communities. Because teachers are influencers in their communities because they influence our children when a child comes from school to come home, whatever message you got from the teacher, that child will share with the parent. We would have used other, another avenue like um, talking to the, the, tax, the people who are in the different sectors, mm. talking to them to make them understand. Like uh, at one time I remember when uh, the numbers kept increasing, 
the border borders started policing it themselves. You could the border border could not pass unless one was putting on a mask because they were saying if you don't put on masks they are going to to to, to bring back lockdown they will limit our movements and yet i have to work to be able to pay this border border so that i own it so taking personal responsibility is something we, sh we should have done as government but by looking at different because it would have even meant that even if the candidates go people would say don't enter here if you don't have a mask like when people fear that government is about to cause lockdown, people in our kids don't allow anybody to enter minus washing hands, mm. minus sanitizing, and minus putting on a, a, what? a mask. But he, you find we, we, there was also the issue of making it too artificial instead of making them to own and take responsibilities yeah. as uh, in whatever category. That's what I think we missed out as government. Thank you so much. The Right Honorable Secretary General of the NRM, uh, Justin Kasule Lumumba. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Waiswa Mufumbiro. Um, thank you, uh, who is the head of uh, ideology and training. Uh, you promise to invite me next time. No, definitely. You are. Please. please yeah, please, because please. we would want to know. It's important. We would want to know from uh, him yes. or his party. Because he is after removing the, what they are calling the dictator, what are they going to do? Very, that please, the please. Not I would be very doing. glad to be invited. We will have a discussion. That show. Um, we will have discussions. Um, and. Uh, and of course, it's important that we keep dialoguing. Yeah. Um, someone said that the moment uh, you fail to talk is when violence starts. So, and we need we need peace. We need uh, some mm -hmm. harmony. We need tolerance. And uh, I think it is important that uh, the leaders, like you people, speak to the the lead that you have around you. So it's important, and we will keep engaging you on these issues. Um, thank you very much, Ramadan Gobi, for always being here. And uh, to Margaret Muhanga, all the way from Fort Porto, thanks a lot. We, we, we appreciate, we don't take it for granted. You're busy because uh, election time, your voice is almost getting lost, but I'm praying that the next 12 days you keep some so that... Uh, <laughs> We can keep talking. Um, to the, uh, we missed Chair, Chairman Mao. Um, sorry for that. We will try to get you next week or the week after because we need you to, uh, to tell us how the campaigns are going from DP's perspective, certainly. Um, but from the technical team here, we are very happy that you managed to bring the show and uh, to ensure that Ugandans uh, listen and watch. Um, and especially that this show is a special one, the last one of the year 2020. Uh, from, next, from tomorrow, midnight, we will have it gone. And uh, many people want it gone but uh, so that they can forget it but we will not forget the year 2020 so many things have happened uh, from me I think the most important message um, I'll re-echo the message of the Secretary General because I liked it let's know that for sure after this election life must be uh, life will continue the election is not coming to end life so let's act from all sides, security forces, please. Um, an election is not war. An election is a civil exercise, a process, and uh, that started from some time back. And it will just end um, on, uh, it will culminate into an election on the 14th. So let's restrain ourselves. Let's ensure that Ugandans uh, participate facilitate them to facilitate to, to participate and uh, the young people please don't don't provoke security people as well just ensure that uh, you 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 can demonstrate peacefully uh, that's within your constitutional right but let's ensure that we keep it civil and let's not lose blood let's not you know lose lives over an election an election is not supposed to lead to death that should be a message to all of us but most especially mr biabakama please you are the referee 
and ensure, like the Secretary General has said, make life easy for all the participants. These are stakeholders who are very important. I had, the, I had General Moon to say that we were not consulted. The Secretary General here is saying we were not consulted. Nope is saying we were not consulted. But they, were not they are not obliged. They are not obliged, yes. but it is important, Secretary General, like yes. you, you echoed. Yes. It is important. Yes. And it would have made the process for him and for all of you easier. So I think that consultation is important. It is prudent. Not that it is a must, but it is prudent. And you need to be... A prudent manager is the one who wins. So please, let's keep it good for the whole country so that there is no much tension. Thanks a lot. Happy New Year uh, is our wish from here at behind the headlines from the UBC team. We wish all Ugandans, we wish everybody a happy 20. 21. Let 2020 pass with all the COVID. Bye-bye. Good night. God bless you. Keep safe. peanut butter that spreads happiness to the whole family. Available in smooth, crunchy and chocolate nut variants. Pick a size that fits your pocket from 125 grams, 250 grams, 400 grams and 800 grams. Nutis peanut butter, the real peanut butter. Available in all leading supermarkets. I choose peace for Yo, party after party. I choose peace for my degree. I want to finish campus and go. I choose peace for profits. When things are okay, customers are flowing. Peace is this, that, and so much more. But above everything, peace puts Uganda first. Choose peace for today and tomorrow as you participate peacefully in the 2021 elections. Visit NIMD Uganda on Facebook and Twitter today. This message is brought to you by the Netherlands Institute for Multi-Party Democracy in partnership with Interparty Organization for Dialogue. iPod, putting Uganda first. 2020, what a year it has been. But hey, we have managed to survive together, haven't we? So let's celebrate together as we welcome a brand new year at the Pal of Africa New Year Celebrations 2020. With great live entertainment from the comfort of your living room. Featuring Shiba, Afrigo Band, John Black, Rangy, Madrat and Chico, Miss Samakula, Della Troop, Spice Diana, Wanky Bender and many others. Others. It's a date this Thursday, the 31st of December, 2020. We usher in the new year in unity for as we are